Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So today's video we're going to be talking about the champions I used most and who performed best for me in Act 6. And before we get to actually discussing the champions again, I want to make sure that this video and the point of this video is perfectly clear. These are champions that I used, what worked for me, what didn't work for me and how frequently I use them and basically lastly kind of like based on my own experience for instance some champion some people might be much more dependent on using symbiote supreme than I was and in fact I pretty much didn't use him for anything at all because initially I didn't even have symbiote supreme and after I got him I still didn't like max out my symbiote supreme and I was just relying on different options uh, so this list is subjective to kind of like a degree because obviously I didn't have all of the champions available and I have my own personal kind of peculiars and biases towards champions with this list we'll be discussing my kind of experience and the champions that I end up using before we actually get to the top 15 champions which I have ranked I wanted to give a couple of uh, worthwhile mentions that were key players for some very specific encounters. For instance, uh, Guillotine 2099. Where is she? Let me find her. There we go. Uh, there is a lane in 6.3 called like Terminal Velocity, which is extremely annoying uh, because it was also like combined with Caustic Temper and there are hardly any good answers for that lane. Uh, but if I was using Guillotine 2099 with Heimdall and Hella Synergy, she was the perfect answer for it because she could completely bypass uh, the Caustic Temper and the Terminal Velocity. So there were a couple of encounters, a couple of fights where she was an absolute MVP. She was also great for some of the all or nothing encounters if you had pre-fight ability active. So that is worth noting. There is a lane like that in 6.43, I believe, where she also was an absolute MVP as well. Now we have Morningstar. I have definitely seen quite a lot of people use Morningstar to very good results. And I used Morningstar here and there as well myself for her level 2 cheese. She can absolutely destroy like resistor nodes or many other nodes where opponents have a lot of buffs. Additionally to that, she is a really good option for a 6.26 champion encounter, which is quite an important and vital part of actually succeeding and completing and exploring Act 6. Now after Morningstar, I was like wanted to give a shout out to uh, the little man thing over here, which, which was and is still, to my knowledge, pretty much the only decent good answer to 6.3 Mysterio <laughs> Acid Wash, uh, because he's like the only effective champion that combines armor break abilities with poison abilities, and that is exactly what you needed for Mis Acid Wash Mysterio. King Root also can do it, but let's face it, King Root you're probably better off just picking another champion than doing it the hard way because King Root absolutely stinks. So Man Thing definitely has his place to be mentioned as well. Another champion I wanted to mention is going to be champion that I sold and I still haven't ranked it up fully. It's going to be Namor. Where is the fire star Namor? There are quite uh, there are some lanes where Namor is extremely useful, but for half of the time I found out that I ended up using different strategy quite often quakes for instance and stuff like that instead of namor now there are definitely matchups where this guy can and will become useful uh, but uh, there were not nearly as much as i expected them to be and uh, as i kept exploring act 6 and especially 6.4 at the point when i already had my namor i generally did not really feel too much need for him now don't get me wrong he can carry you th through some of very tricky and difficult finds there's like a torns lane in 6.3 so on and so forth but overall i just wanted to put out there that i didn't find namor nearly as mandatory and necessary as i thought he would be for exploring act 6 but still obviously there's quite a bit that he can do last couple of shout outs obviously can go for uh number one is gonna be ronan because ronan is the king of cheese wherever he works he works the best uh, hands down and where is that guy missing him on the screen here we go 
And even at rank 3 he was able to solo like 6.36 final boss and there were quite few other lanes and nodes in 6.3, either resistor or something like that. Basically if opponent can be stunned and if opponent has a lot of buffs this guy will put in some work even at low rank. Uh, low rank and relatively low signature as well. Signature helps to have higher but typically uh, if he works then he works and uh, that's about it. Even at rank 3 he did see fair amount of play. I feel like I kind of owe him a rank up now because he definitely has been putting in work throughout the years. Might not be every day that I use him but I'm sure as hell I'm happy that I have him if I need him. And the last champion that I did not include in my list and I would assume that vast majority of the people would include is Symbiote Supreme because Symbiote Supreme once again is a great option for 626 Symbiote Supreme uh, sorry uh, for champion boss for do you bleed Medusa and there are some other encounters where he can be helpful it's just me personally ended up using some different options and different alternatives right so now we are ready to get to our top 15 list right guys and we're gonna start the top 15 list with Captain Marvel movie version. Now, especially in the initial chapters where opponent health pulls were lower, she was an absolute breeze to use. She smashed through the fights extremely quickly. But in 6.3 and 6.4, it became a bit harder to use her, and I kind of shied away from it in some situations because the health pulls got increased, and then the fights got exponentially harder. In a sense, Captain Marvel movie is a bit like Corvus where she has X amount of reach before you kind of like indestructibility expires and your charges start running low and then obviously you can maintain the charges you can play, slow play it and reactivate the indestructibility or what have you but that kind of like defeated the purpose of her role uh, in the questing teams that I selected here for and unfortunately in 6.3 and 6.4 it was quite a bit trickier to use her and if I ended up using her I always wanted to make sure that I have suicides on, that I have boosts on and possibly cosmic boosts as well and then she could put in some extremely good amount of work so she was great for some distract lanes obviously we all know that she's fantastic for Icarus lanes there are no boosts necessary for that uh, even for backblast where she has her critical damage increased so throughout the all of the quests she did make an appearance here and there she was not a champion that i often relied to carry me through lanes but at times when i did if i used boost if i used suicide mastery so i used cosmic power boosts she put in an amazing amount of work and i don't think she gets enough credit for her capabilities in act six she just kind of like shied away from the main plan after captain Marvel movie version i'm gonna place a champion that i think many people will not expect to be as low but again this is based on my personal experience and now I know that Omega has a lot of love and followers and fans and there are quite a lot of lanes where he is suitable for unfortunately for me personally I didn't really find his playstyle to be compatible with the super high attack that opponents had and uh, I did bring him in a fair amount of time but unfortunately, uh, quite often I left kind of like disappointed because either if opponent was uncooperative or even when you make like one mistake and you lose your spores and it's kind of tricky to pick yourself back up where each blocked hit really smacks your block in and you lose health quite quickly. I found it Omega to be much more difficult to use in a lot of Act 6 situations than I intended, uh, than I thought it would be. It's certainly much harder in especially later chapter 6.3 and 4 where attacks are absolutely stacked. So I think he has a great amount of value for 6.1 and 2. He's one of the best uh, 6.15 crossbones uh, answers and that is a big kind of like problem fight for many people. But overall, uh, the further the Act 6 went, the more I kind of realized that I am quite often better off using slightly different options. Now, he did make a resurgence in 6.4 thanks to another champion, and it was kind of like ironic that he was quite often serving as a synergy piece by end of Act 6. But still, he's definitely capable of answering a lot of fights, a lot of problems. Those immunities are extremely useful. Also, the tentacle hits are able to bypass passive damage back, so he can take on 
Electros, he can take on some Torns and stuff like that, so he definitely has a fair amount of use in Act 6. It's just the harder opponents, uh, the bigger opponents are, and the bigger is the attack of the opponents, the harder it ends up being using this guy. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we can move on to the next champion and spot number 13 Spot number 13. I'm gonna give it to Human Torch Now Human Torch has a couple of problems that not many people really discuss number one He is in fact quite frail. He takes a large amount of block damage. He's not very sustainable his health pool isn't the biggest and it is not as easy, for instance, to use Human Torch in Act 6 than it is in Abyss. In Abyss, opponent's attacks are much smaller and he's much more sustainable because of it. Now, in Act 6, using him quite often is much more trickier than that. And in addition to that, I'm still one of the people who thinks that he absolutely stinks in an average matchup. If there are no energy attacks involved, like Darkhawk, like Sentinel, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, if the opponent isn't mystic, then I'd never use him. But for the fights, for these niche fights where I needed uh, either a lot of damage or time, or when I was going up with some tricky mystics, uh, he was fantastic. He was like, a, if you describe that as a scalpel that you use with like a precision, you brought him in for specific encounters, for specific lanes, for specific nodes. And that made him quite valuable because when you are up against the Mystic Champion, against a champion that does energy damage, he's fantastic. He can deal a lot of damage, he can bypass a lot of problems. His Cold Snap Incinerate Immune, which comes in handy. The way he distributes his damage is great. How he switches to passive damage over time and powers things, super useful. And he definitely has his place in Act 6. Unfortunately, it's never going to be where he stands in forefront of your questing team. He's going to be the guy in the back seat that you bring out when you need an answer to a specific problem. But all in all, he was definitely helpful. Also, he's great for, obviously, the back blast because he doesn't take incinerate damage. He's great for clap back anywhere where you see clap back. It's insane cheese time with Human Torch and so forth. So there are a lot of places where you can use the guy. It's just not going to be 9 fights out of 10. It's going to be the 1 fight out of 10, but you're going to be happy that you have him. Right, now we are moving on to spot number 12, and I'm going to try to get along a bit quicker. Spot number 12 is going to go to Sentinel. And throughout every single chapter of Act 6, Sentinel put in some extremely serious work. Uh, Sentinel is one of those unsuspecting heroes where on paper he might not seem like the greatest champion. He is definitely not the champion that's most fun to play, but his toolkit, his skill set, just seems to fit the bill for the right things at the right times. Like there is a lane in 6.3 where you need uh, opponent to be under a shock debuff to deal damage. It's perfect for that. Every heavy plays shock debuff. Also, there was a tech boost where if you heal block opponent, your parries deal shock. He drops his level once and opponents constantly get shocked. So that was extremely great there. Even little things as Red Hulk in 615, where you need bleed immunity and you need heal block. He has that. Uh, then there were King Groot fight in 6.3, I believe, or 6.2. So 6.42 or 6.43 where basically King Root was a massive, massive mini boss in a really tricky node, and Sentinel's like one of the best options that can actually solo that fight, because again, it demands you for the opponent to be under shock debuff, and there's a lot of these back, not back blast, static blast nodes, when opponents use their special attacks, you lose your power, but Sentinel uh, has a signature ability that kind of like gives him half immunity to that, so he loses actually a lot less power and he still uses his special attacks. So there was just a lot of little things that come together and made Sentinel really great option, and he definitely put in a lot of work throughout uh, all of the quests. Right, after Sentinel, I'm gonna definitely be mentioning where's my Fiona. So there we go. So She-Hulk. She-Hulk is again extremely kind of like versatile, usable champion because there are obviously a lot of uh, evades and a lot of unstoppables and she's 
Okay, in my opinion, probably the best slot character in, currently in the game now. I can admit that Stealth Spidey can do some great things as well. But overall, all in all, I think she hunt definitely did a lot more for me. Especially because I had her ranked earlier as well. She's still a fantastic option even after her heavy attack change against 6.26 uh, champion. She's still fantastic whenever you need uh, to prevent unstoppables. There are a lot of annoying, I don't know, juggernauts and other <laughs> champions that consistently go unstoppable that she deals with at ease. She's also one of the few champions that can deal with kind of like long distance relationship voids, for instance, because against science champions, you can shrug up divas. There were, again, quite a lot of circumstantial utility that made her perfect. For instance, she's poison immune and can deal with the unstoppables at the same time, so that's really useful. She's perfect answer for Hydro Adaptoid, for instance, in 6.4, uh, the boss, I think that's the fifth boss. And yeah, there's just so much she can do, and she ended up coming uh, to the forefront of questing team more often than that, realistically. Well, maybe not quite that often, but definitely put in a lot of solid work and definitely helped me to get through a lot of difficult fights. Right. After She-Hulk, we need to go down to another unsung hero. And that unsung hero is Hyperion. I definitely did use Hyperion a lot, and I feel that I would have used him even more if I didn't have all of the champions available that I did. He's one of those champions that can deal with so many different problems in so many different ways. It might ne ne necessarily always be the best way to solve a problem, but especially if your account is missing a key figure, a key player, quite often Hyperion will be able to stand up and take its place. For instance, if you see a huge Electro, obviously my first instinct will be uh, to use Namor or Quake or whatever, but if you do not have these champions available, Hyperion is a fantastic option to fight against Electros because you can just spam your level 1, so you hardly take any damage and you will get through that fight. So Hyperion quite often is a very, very solid plan B. And obviously, if you are missing the champions that most people would consider plan A, then Hyperion will always come to the table and step up. And yes, therefore, I can definitely say with all of the different nodes that we had in Act 6, Hyperion was always one of those champions that might necessarily be my go-to strategy, but quite often ended up on the team anyways, just because he's able to carry me through a fight or two fights. I do have to add that I do like playing Hyperion a lot more if I'm not running Suicides. If I'm not running Suicide Masteries, then I personally think Hyperion is probably the best Cosmic Champion in the game. If I'm running Suicide Masteries, then it's kind of in between Captain Marvel movie and Corvus at the moment. But if Suicide Masteries are not active, then Hyperion stands head and shoulders above both of them. And yeah, put in a lot of solid work. And spot number 9 for now... Uh, and this, again, is a relatively difficult pace placement for spot number 9, because I didn't have him throughout quite a bit of Act 6, obviously. Only acquired him when 6.3 came out, I believe, so he, by default, couldn't really show his worth in 6.2 and 6.1 too much, unless I did some sort of revisit videos. But all in all, Dr. Doom was always one of my solid go-to mystics when I needed... Uh, some nullify options when I saw quite a lot of annoying analysis, especially if I couldn't quake those analysis, then <laughs> Dr. Doom is always there. And uh, he's just really, really great power control and buff control option, especially if you're not running suicides. I used him quite a bit even with suicides because quite often I brought him in specifically for a fight or two. And even then with suicides, he still can manage to get through two, three fights, even though you're taking recall damage. So it is definitely worth the note because in Act 6, you have so many different fights and so many different opponents. And you do not necessarily need to make sure every champion has a perfect mastery set that you're using. Because, for instance, yeah, Dr. Doom, he's not the greatest champion of suicides. But if you only need him for one or two fights in the quest, then he will still do what he has to do. And thanks to the suicides, he might do, even do it quicker and better. So, I uh, definitely do not want to understate the value of Dr. Doom. But it's kind of tricky for me to place him. He possibly and probably would end up a lot higher if I have had him if I would have had him since the beginning of Act 6. Uh, but since he joined in 6.4 and 6.3, he definitely found his uses against uh, 
several different champions, for instance, Thor Ragnarok, a mini boss with power economy node and whatever else. He absolutely destroyed that guy. He destroys Captain Marvel movie version. He can deal with Hydra Adapted. He can solo 626 champion if you play well with him. He can do a lot of really cool things. Uh, it's also kind of like skill based as well, but he's really tanky. He also can take a punch on a chin and he can take a lot of blocked hits. That makes him feel extremely confident and it makes you extremely comfortable using the champion. So he definitely puts in a lot of work. Now for me personally, the way I used my champions, and some people might not agree with that, spot number eight I'm gonna put in Colossus. Because after his rework, initially I was slightly skeptical, I recognized that there's something there but I still didn't quite put my trust in him to bring in him in and at 6. And then in 6.3 I started doing it more, and especially in 6.4 he has been putting in so much work with all of the immunities that he has, with all of the quirky bits of utility, the fact that he has buffs, the fact that he doesn't rely on debuffs, his insane amount of damage potential, especially if you add in a couple of synergy pieces, and those synergy pieces are Omega Red and M Frost, and that's literally all that's needed to make him an insane god tier. He's good, his damage output is decent even without the synergies. It's not out of the world without the synergies, but once you add the synergies, man, it just goes crazy. And he put in so much work, he's so tanky. At any given fight, if you drop a level 3 on opponent, they'll pretty much never land a critical hit on you. And the entire thing about just happenstance with him as well. So he's a mutant, so he's the one of the champions that can be used for special concealer if you run Captain America uh, Infinity War synergies. Uh, he plays well under limited kind of like attack combination allowances. For instance, tunnel vision, you can just go parry uh, medium heavy all the time and deal a lot of damage. And all of that combined with all of his immunities and other cool things that he can do has been incredibly useful, not to mention that Act 6.3 and 6.4 rely much more heavy on having that incinerate immunity as well. There are quite a lot of those nodes involved, plus obviously he's bleed immune as well, and yeah, it's been fantastic. He has done really good amount of work, and I used him a fair bit, especially in 6.4, and I'm growing more and more in this guy. Currently, in my head, this guy is arguably one of the best the mutant champions, if not the best mutant champion in the game, because his value just keeps going up and up and up. It's a bit of a case of Sentinel, kind of like. Sentinel might seem unsus expecting to be so great as I value him, but just the sheer fact that he's consistently useful everywhere across the board, every single new piece of content that comes out, Sentinel can go in and put in work. Colossus kind of feels the same. So yeah, definitely hugely growing acceptance of this guy. And yeah, absolutely love it. Love the fact that I ranked him up. And after Colossus, we're gonna have to give it to Beardo. The Beardo, again, is one of those champions that might necessarily not always be your first choice to use in a fight, because he's really not the quickest fight finisher, but his block proficiency makes him suitable for so many different fights. The perfect parries are extremely underrated. Obviously, the ability to cheese all of the heal nodes, super useful. And all in all, he just, again, happens to fit the bill in a lot of different situations. He's probably the best champion boss finisher as well, under the last 10%, thanks to his block proficiency. And all in all, he was again one of those champions that every single quest, every single kind of like chapter that came out, there was something that you kind of feel that you need to use him for, or there's some problem finds that he was a perfect answer for. So, uh, my respect for this guy definitely has grown since Act 6 got released. I ranked him up quite early and initially I was a bit underwhelmed because I knew that he's like good, but I didn't really need him much for anything. But then Act 6 came out and Act 6 is by far the most demanding content. And time and time again he stepped up. Whether that was the heal reversal, whether it was just being super tanky, whether that was the ability to shrug off debuffs with skill synergy and all of that just added up, ability to deal with unstoppables, 
so, so yeah, huge amount of increase in my respect for this guy as well. And currently, I certainly, personally at least, value him quite a bit higher than I do Void. Void is better when it comes to mitigating opponent's power gain. But recently, with the increased power gain nodes, Void is not exactly the best option for a lot of those fights either. Because of the interaction, for instance, if opponents have... 100% increased power gain and they have the natural power gain even if you have double petrify on you only kind of cancel out the node and you do not cancel out the abilities themselves so it's kind of trickier to use void in a lot of situations where it used to be void still fantastic champion should have given him a worthwhile shout out in my video before that uh so yeah next to guillotine 2099 because void is good Void's great but honestly captain american infinity water feel fits so many more problem finds for me personally but again that's just my experience and after captain mercury infinity war we're going to kind of start moving to the heavy hitters and the heavy hitters here first and foremost is going to be warlock and spot number six now warlock's again relatively new champion obviously so he was not around all of that six but uh he sees a lot of play and because of his passive heal block that is extremely useful and with that passive heal block comes really really great power control so again situationally when he's needed he's one of the best options for where he's needed access to bleed on heavy attacks and made him also a really great option for instance do you bleed medusa or the do you bleed lane in general the double immunities the access to shock being tech being robot uh kind of always work out really well obviously that armor buff makes him great option for havoc also he can power rain havoc on like every encounter so he was great for havoc boss in 6.3 and there was just so much he did extremely well and i'm super happy to have this guy and i definitely used him a lot and i value him extremely high and just above warlock i will place corvus glaive now, Corvus, obviously I do know that I'm lucky enough to have a rank 3, 6 star Corvus. And if I would be talking about rank 5, 5 star Corvus, then the feeling is a bit different. Because rank 5, 5 star Corvus was great, one of the best champions for 6.1. 6.2, his role kind of like dropped down a bit. And by the time 6.3 came, realistically, if you wanted to use Corvus, you needed to make sure that you boosted, you have cosmic power boosts on, you have suicide masteries on, and you can get... At least a couple of missions along the way so Corvus is one of those champions that's kind of dancing on the line dancing on a fence especially as a rank 5, five star but as a rank 3 six star even in 6.4 just by having suicide masteries active and no boost whatsoever i'm still able to knock down the first fight so with zero missions just around the edge as my charges were running out and as soon as i got my first charge he was able to finish all of these fights really quick and that kind of like pushed him back up to a really great option for many different fights and he did a lot of work for me there is no way i can deny it and i do realize that if i run him without boosts without cosmic power boosts for vast majority of the time as a rank 3 6 star then a rank 5 5 star once again would be still extremely good for 6.3 and 6.4 if you're using boosts and cosmic power boosts then especially and then you can just blitz through a lot of content so here is the important difference because rank 5 5 star corvus probably would rank toward the bottom of top 15 because you would need to make sure that you're boosting up you're providing all this help for the character and then he will put in a lot of work for you the rank 3 6 star corvus kind of like just jumped up with that initial damage increase and his ability to finish well the first fight for getting the first charge and then kind of like getting rolled and getting going uh so yeah i use him a lot he was really good he's obviously the uh pseudo bleed and call snap immunity come in handy the cheat death mechanic is coming handy really a lot many times the true accuracy sorry true strike and true damage abilities are useful also, the way he drops his level 2 in power drains enables you to kind of like push without extra risk. And yeah, definitely love it. Uh, definitely used him a lot. He helped a lot. And again, for 6.1 and 6.2, rank 5 5 star Corvus is still perfectly fine. 6.3 and 6.4, you would 
kind of need to make sure you're boosting up properly to use a rank 5 five star card as well. Uh, all that being said, moving on to spot number 4, and spot number 4 is gonna go to Nick Fury. Now, how rank 3 is starting Nick Fury as well. And uh, Nick Fury is amazing. <laughs> Uh, his impact on my roster is arguably the most impactful champion that has come out in the last two years for my account, or at least last year or so, because he's not only a great champion and a fantastic answer to many difficult problem fights, he's also a kind of like master synergist that brings a lot of pieces together and it involves Quake for instance, it involves making champions friendly for suicide masteries, therefore I can use, I don't know, Human Torch with Suicide Masteries if I have to, I didn't consistently have to change my Masteries. And there's just a lot of different things this guy does well. Obviously the nodes like Tunnel Vision, he absolutely thrives for, because as soon as you get your first five uh, tactical charges, he cannot miss, but he still gets a debuff, so he consistently gets the Willpower Heal. He's insane damage while bleed. And yeah, he definitely saw a lot of play. Uh, maybe not every single time as a champion I directly bring in the fight or bring in most of the fights but he was often a champion on a team who was there if he was needed and if he wasn't needed he was still putting in a lot of work by making most or all of the other champions that are in team much better and much more suitable so uh, Nick Fury for me is definitely one of the kind of like core central figures for Act 6, that if I had to kind of like wake up in the middle of the night and somebody tell me Act 7 came out quick, pick 5 champions, go and play, Nick Fury would probably be my second shot straight after Quake. So I'd be like, Quake, Nick Fury, nah, 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 something like Aegon Ghost, whatever. So that that is how I'd go, so that's how important he is. And yeah, after Nick Fury, the big 3. Now, big 3 are pretty much head and shoulders above everything else. Because uh, most of these champions that I talked about can be replaced with one another or maybe some different champions that are not as good but can still kind of like fulfill the entire thing, like fulfill the goal. And top three champions, I think, stand kind of like quite a bit higher than the rest of them. And in third spot is going to be Aegon. Aegon started out well in 6.1, because before 6.1 came out, Aegon was largely considered as a champion that's great for Labyrinth and not much else. He was amazing, insane in Labyrinth, but there wasn't a lot of content where he could shine, which content was kind of like long and difficult enough for you to ramp him up properly, or there was simply not enough need for him. But the more pieces of Act 6 got released, and obviously Abyss also helped his uh, popularity quite a bit, He's shooting higher and higher because he's doing better and better. Now, when Aegon, typically in, let's say, an average 6.3 or 6.4 uh, path, you would say, he can relatively easily get to about 300 to 400 hit combo meter, sometimes even 500. And if you take a look at all of the abilities that he unlocks by 300 hit combo meter, uh, he gets to crit on blocks, he gets furies at 300, he gets through accuracy 150, he shrugs off all of the debuffs, he deals immense amount of damage, and yeah, he crits through block, and that's kind of like more or less it, but that's such a powerful combination. And obviously you can do the heavy cheese method where you get hit on purpose and deal a huge burst of damage, and I think most importantly, the fact that he does a lot of damage and gets to shrug off all of the debuffs put him quite as high as he is currently in the list of champions because he can deal with so many different nodes. There are a lot of nodes, especially in 6.3 and 6.3.4, you're going to notice that you get debuffed a lot and then they inconvenience your life in one way or another. He simply shrugs it all off pretty much immediately. He bypasses the weight effects, so that's super useful. Again, that insane damage spams buffs like crazy, so that can be used as piece of utility to kind of like consistently bypass buffed up lanes or whatever you have. 6.1... Six, I think, has Symbiote Supreme on buffed up, and he's by far like the best option there. Where many champions struggle, and many similar spend thousand units, he just goes in, eats a heavy attack, eats charges a heavy attack, eats a hit, and completely destroys that Symbiote Supreme. 
So there's so many different things that he does well, and I think Act 6 really helped to highlight how great of a champion he is, and his stock definitely has risen really high because of Act 6, in my opinion. Obviously, Abyss and Labyrinth helps a lot, but this just proved that he's not like one-dimensional mega long content character that also stuff like act six he gets enough room enough run up to do extremely well so specifically for act six i do rate him in third place and the spot before nick fury overall i still value nick fury as a better champion because nick fury has more uses in aq aw and a lot of smaller content and he obviously has bigger impact on the rest of your team thanks to his synergies but specifically for act six i put a gun ahead uh, just because of how many different problems and how many different tricky hard lanes he answered. And spot number two, and again, this this is going to be... Take it with a grain of salt. I am strongly and firmly still standing my feet in ground and considering Ghost to be second best champion in game. And Ghost is also second best champion for Act 6. Ghost does a lot, he bypasses a lot of fights. But the fights that Ghost is good for, quite often there is quite a large list of champions that would also be almost as good at. Ghost's fantastic, he's one of the staples in the team dealing with Biohazard, Freezer Burn, All or Nothing lanes, whatever kind of lanes. Quite often Ghost is one of your go-to options because she just answers so many problems. And Ghost, there is no way getting around it, Ghost is OP. Uh, Ghost is definitely an OP champion and she just increases your capability of your roster by a mile and that is definitely no exception act six quite plenty of bosses quite plenty of tricky lanes quite pen plenty of specific niche fights uh, goes absolutely amazing for backblast every fight's over in like 10 12 hits uh icarus there are some insane numbers floating around you can probably clear the whole map in like half an hour 40 minutes using ghost and there are a lot of things she can obviously cheese and there are even more things that she can just genuinely be used and good for so definitely love ghost used her a whole lot helped me a whole lot but for me personally quake is still the number one champion for act six because quake provides the answers to encounters like hardly any other champion does or even if they would, they, you would still probably end up using units and stuff like that. For instance, quite many people have asked me, what do you do against that spite particle protector Ant-Man? And I didn't even realize that he's gonna be a problem because I had Quake and what I did is I Quaked him, I took some hits and block, I didn't trigger dexterity up until a point that Ant-Man has a concussion on, then I triggered my dexterity, then I ghosted the entire Quake the entire fight and Spite never became an issue, and Stun Immunity isn't an issue, and Quake soloed that fight without much trouble. And there are multiple, many kind of like stories like that where I go in a quest, I clear that fight using Quake, and then I get like dozens of people asking me, how did you clear that one, or how did you do it? And quite often my answer is always kind of like Quake. And I do understand that Quake requires specific playstyle and specific skill set, and she's not for everybody. But I can honestly say that I personally feel much more capable because of the fact that I have put the time in and practice into play Quake. I enjoy playing Quake, and she's saving me units, resources, and headache every single day. Therefore, for me personally, Act 6 is still, yet again, another proof that Quake is the best overpowered champion in the game uh, if you can play her well and that is about it these are the champions that carried me through act six for better or worse this is what i used obviously again this is a subjective list if you agree with it uh, if you have any alterations changes any comments please do feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below but for now i have talked for far too long i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you're still watching Leave a comment saying top 15, just so I know which ones of you are actually commenting halfway through and which ones actually saw me mumble through the rest of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to catch you guys soon. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. See ya.